Hello, everybody. It's Craig Shoemaker with Enlightened Up. It's actually the rebrand. It's called Enlightened Up now. It's called Can I Help You with Dr. Craig Shoemaker. Now it's just Enlightened Up because we really do need to enlighten the fuck up. That's what we need to do a lot more of. And that's why we have a fabulous comedian with us as our guest for our inaugural version. Our inaugural. And how better? Well, we'll get to that. Well, how that is appropriate because it's like we're going on a three-hour tour here. So, so <laughs> I we'll, see what you did we'll, there. We'll, we'll get to that uh, on why I'm saying that. But Samantha Hale, welcome. This is wonderful Hi. to have you. Thank you for having me and letting me be the first. You're, you, we're just getting to know you. I just met you recently. We did a gig together. I've been admiring you on your posts. Feeling is mutual. That's how that's how we get to know one another these days. It really is. Instagram and, yeah. and other comics, of course. Oh, you should meet my friend. Or Yeah. There's no well, there's no comedy out there and there's not a lot of comedy going on. So yeah. this is how we have to do it. Oh, that was a nice clip. And I saw some clips of you. I'm always looking for people to kind of work with and open for me and stuff. And we have a mutual friend, Zara. We do, Zara right? Mizrahi, yeah, who was just one of the most gorgeous people you'll ever meet. She is. There's, so sweet. But enough about her. She's already been on. Yeah, she's uh, <laughs> it's about me. But it's yes, my Zara, time. But, but she was never on video <laughs> like you are. That's right. In our new studios here. And this show is about enlightening up. And I really do believe that we need to more than ever in this country right now, in the world. Especially now. Yeah, we need to bring some light and levity. There's so much darkness. Mm -hmm. And and quite frankly, I'm an energy guy, and you have a great energy. Thank you. That's why you're here. Oh, my goodness. Don't you find that to be true of you? I actually I do. <laughs> I was voted ni- I was voted nicest in high school. You were not. Uh, I was. You were voted nicest. I was. I was voted. I was like I couldn't be voted hottest or most likely to succeed. No. Okay. Oh, she's nice. That's well, what I got. But that's much better. I was voted shortest. <laughs> so, shortest. Yeah. Where did did you go in a high school of giants? <laughs> well, how are you the shortest? <laughs> I was five one in high school. What what? What kind of Wheaties were you eating? <laughs> what happened? You're, you looked at me. You, I, I hope they did get that okay. This is where it's an advantage being not an audio podcast, but video. <laughs> the look you gave me. Was, was a genuine <laughs> what? <laughs> that was, yeah, I was a 5'1 in high school, but uh, I, I grew. I obviously, clearly, I'm 6'2 you, now. You grew. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my growth spurt. It hasn't <laughs> happened. Oh, so you were always in the medium side because you're not sure. No, I'm like medium. Well, I, yeah. I, listen, to be a comedian, you know, you've had to have suffered. So so far, we've got Come nice, on. you're medium, mm-hmm. you're pretty. So, <laughs> so what, in the, what in the world happened when you became a comedian? There has to be some adversity. Well, if I had a writer, it would be must call her pretty for her to do a <laughs> podcast. Um, I had all kinds of things happen to me. You I did? mean, what? what you, you got some pain? What Share the you, pain. What would you like to know? Well, I, I mean, want to know. Yeah, let's start with the, the pain uh, maybe what, when do you think the most pain happened for you growing up? Do you think it was like elementary school? Was it mid middle school? Was it high school? When do you think that? And do you think that's a good question though? Do you think that comedy does come from pain? And that's the reason that's what motivated you to do comedy. Comedy is tragic plus time. Yeah. Right. So something really awful happens and then you try to get yourself through it by finding the light in it or making fun of it exactly. or Every time, I mean, you probably do it too. When something really awful happens, you're like, well, at least I got a joke out of it. And it's your way of saying that totally sucked, but hey. Oh, yeah. I, got, I have an hour on my yeah, ex-wife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, at least. I'm sure. I mean, I don't, I mean, growing up, I was, I was definitely the fat kid. I was made fun of. Okay. Horribly. Now we're on to something. Horribly. I can give you the look you gave me. It's like, wow. You did? Okay, we're even now. We're, we're, we're even on the looks. You're a school of giants? I'll say that back to you. I, so, I was the giant. You were. <laughs> I was the giant. So yes. you lost weight, obviously. I did. You're not considering this. No, this is like, I'm not a small person, but I feel healthy now. I work out. I eat well. Okay. I feel good. So at one time, and what's the word you're going to use for this? Just so, so I am correct and politically correct on the heavy. Is that the word? Or what? Ugh, I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was a, a, looking, you, a what? large child. I just say fat kid. Like once a fat good, kid, okay. always a fat kid. I love that word. Love that word. I won't say it, but that's a but good I word. But I can okay. because it was, um, I guess I think how it happened was my parents split when I was maybe four or five oh, and wow. I went back and forth, but my dad, bless him, uh, his idea of, of uh, breakfast was Burger King. So I would get my Whopper and my shake. He would take me to school. 
I would eat whatever horrible things they had in the cafeteria. Uh, he would pick me up after school. We'd go to Taco Bell. And then his dinner was a box of fried chicken and Top Ramen. God, I was raised in the wrong house. I love this guy. I would be all over that. I mean, I liked it at the time. Yeah, but then, course. you know, when you get called Queen Fatty and... Oh, God. Kids are awful. Oh, of course. Kids are, are nightmares. Well, kids are the reason we do comedy. I mean, yes. So, so far we've got now this is we're working way backwards. Mm -hmm. So this who you are today is no pain. There's no pain here. You, you know, you've got the good looks. You've got the, you know, Years the, the talent. All the, yeah. So, <laughs> so this is the after. This is great. So now we can share our yeah. story because we're past our pain. Yeah. So now you've got divorce. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, bad food. Bad and you've food. Got, you're called Queen Fatty. Queen, yeah. <laughs> Tomato I, head, cherry face, because I had like really red cheeks too. Oh, look at yeah. this. That's oh, all coming yeah. out now. This uh -huh. is great. And you have what's great about it is I can tell that you are past the pain. That's, by the way, if yeah. you notice this, if you are still in it, this is a big You can't this, joke about it. Nope. Nope. You can't. And people feel it. They you, know you it. Can try the it. audience will not exactly. trust you. They just Thank feel you. bad for you. I'm glad you know that at your yeah. young. <laughs> young in the career Thank in life. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I mean, really, that's a very important thing that people need to know is they can smell if you're not, like if you're fresh in a divorce, mm -hmm. oh, they know it. Absolutely. I just worked with a comedian. He's one of the best and he's fresh and he's still trying to do material. Not ready yet. He, no, not yeah. ready. And, and it was real noticeable. He did yeah. not have the set that he normally has. Yeah. I mean, he's a killer act. Have you ever had a breakdown on stage? Yeah. I have. Oh, like yeah. literally? Literally. Like Literally. Full on? Full on. Wow. Full on. It was when I, soon after I lost my mom. So both uh, my parents have passed. So that's probably a huge part of my trauma and my. That's recent though. Uh, she, her, my mom was about three years ago. Yeah. And then my dad was, I was 22. Oh, that's not too recent. Yeah. No. So that, that, I can't even believe how long ago that was. That's like, wait, it's been how long? So, but your mom, that was a big tragedy mm -hmm. for you. And that's when you had to break down on stage. I did. You were asked to perform or you just. I, okay. So I think, so she had cancer mm -hmm. and we did think that she was going to recover. Um, she had uterine cancer. So she had the hysterectomy. Um, and so we thought she's going to be okay, but it spread to her stomach. And uh, once that happened, it was only a couple months. Um, but when we were originally told she has five years and then it wound up not being five years. Um, so during that time, it's just like this reality slap of, oh my gosh, this is really happening. There's yeah. no way out of this. Yeah. And while I was in the hospital with her and dealing with that and figuring out that, okay, I'm going to have to do hospice and all of that. I was trying so desperately to hold on to any normal part of my life. So I was still doing shows here and there just to feel normal for an hour, you know, and it was, it was it's hard. It can be cleansing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And she, you know, bless her. My mom was, she, she encouraged was, you to do it, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, she had good days and bad days, mm -hmm. but, um, she was funny the whole time. So I would just write things down that she would say, you know, and like, I have a whole chunk on it. And, and one of the, it's a true story, how she found out that there was a hot male nurse who was working on the floor where she was staying. <laughs> so she requested him every time that I showed up. So I was like, Oh my goodness. And so there was one day I brought her like a 36 pack of Coca-Cola. Cause it was the one thing that she could swallow and keep okay. down for some reason. So I brought in like so much soda, the hot nurse walks in and he says, Oh, I see you have a lot of um, Coca-Cola in here. Would you mind if I shared with another patient? And without missing a beat, my mom said, oh, would you mind sharing your phone number with my daughter? I was like, mom. Oh, I thought you meant she was after him. She was, she wanted, well, she kind of was in a way. <laughs> she wanted him she was, to I, impregnate me. <laughs> so she was, did you say that he was hot to her? Like you agreed with her? Yeah. He, oh. Oh, he, there was no question. This man was hot. Oh, there okay. was no question <laughs> about that. I was like, how are you a nurse? Why are you not like a model bodybuilder? He was beautiful. But she was into him as well. So you two were like having fun. Yeah. Saying this guy's. Yeah. Know, and was she like faking stuff to, so he would come in? <laughs> she probably did you at know, some point. I've got a, I've got a very sore breast. Uh, <laughs> can you examine it? Can somebody do something about this sore breast? <laughs> I think my daughter's breast is a little off too. <laughs> you might need to check her out. I'm not sure if she's my daughter. Can you uh, check uh, check her breast to make sure that they're the same size? Uh, I, so that's. Did you ever date the guy? No, he was married. I had oh, no shot. <laughs> oh. No, so it was just fun. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, and there was, uh, there was. So the breakdown happened. It was maybe like. 
four or five months after she actually passed. And luckily I was at a friend's show and it was a comfortable show that I'd been on many times. There was a lot of people I knew Where in the room. Where was it located? Uh, FUBAR in West Hollywood. My okay. friend uh, Mikey and Teddy, they had the Mikey and Teddy show that ran for, gosh, like seven years there every Friday. Mm. And it was just a... A great kind of hangout. It a was a lot of comics in the audience. Yes, a lot There's of a comics, but a lot, a lot of you know regular audience mm-hmm. as well. Um, it was just kind of the place where com- like even if you weren't on the show, you mm-hmm. still like to hang out. Really, it was that show. You know, normally you're like, I'm not booked. Oh, I'm tired. I'm staying home. Sure. But this one was just great, and I was trying new material. And uh, I think why it happened is right before I left, my aunt stopped by and gave me my mom's jewelry box oh. as I was leaving. Yeah. And so it didn't hit me until two hours later. Oh, my. I have a jewelry box. It and happened to hit you while uh-huh. you're in front of people with yes. a microphone. And it got to the point where I tried to save the joke. And then I just said, hey, I, I can't. Yeah. And I told them why I was upset. And the whole they could not have been more supportive. Oh, of course. It felt like a warm hug. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, well, that's where we get our hugs. Mm-hmm. Our hugs are you know, from laughter. Mm-hmm. That's a big old hug. It's why we need it. Yeah. We need that laughter. It's which, validation. Which is one of the reasons we do this show. It's called Enlighten Up. Is mm-hmm. is is people need to have an understanding that this is an, as important, if not the most important thing you could have in your life. Absolutely. I mean, think about what could be more important than finding laughter and joy and happiness. Right. What What would be above that? Anything. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us yeah. vibrating, right? That's yeah. what keeps our, our energy up. It's a great word, vibration. Because it, it's all internal. It is. You and, know? and I'm here to kind of be Johnny Laughter Seed <laughs> and plant this in people. And seeing you and talking to you is this was great therapy for you. You, yeah. you got to move on, evolve, and feel yeah. the love. And every time also, I, yeah. You know, laugh out love. That's my slogan. Exactly. You know? That's exactly right. Yeah. And and I feel like every time that I'm in front of a new group of people, it's an opportunity for me to tell them how amazing my mom was. Oh, wow. You know? So I look at it that way. That's really cool. Yeah. You didn't do that material when we worked together recently. You didn't do, I d- of course, I think we had I... to deal with a fart in the room. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best heckle ever. <laughs> Ever, <laughs> ever, in all my years of comedy, decades. Never happened. Never happened. It was so, la- it was literally tell a people, showstopper. Tell what, <laughs> literally so, a showstopper. So, uh, Jimmy Shin was on stage, he was doing his set, I think he was maybe just about to land a punchline, and, and there but was- the place we have to describe, the place was really unusual. Yeah, it's- Harrison a, a, Ford's- What? You didn't know this? No, wait, what? You must not have watched my act. Now I know you didn't watch my act, you little shit, because <laughs> I did a Harrison Ford thing. You didn't know that? That's Harrison Ford's house. No, I didn't know that was real. Like, that's really his house? Yes. No, I didn't know yes. that. Yes, so we were performing. That's the lap pool where his kids were raised. So I, no. I, I lived. I said, all I can picture is Harrison Ford with his kids going, do another lap, damn it. Oh, that's my the, God. Come on, Chewy. I mean, it's, that was where we were. I go to the they, bathroom for five minutes, and it and, and that's what happens? Oh, you didn't. Oh, that's when you went to the, you went to the bathroom. I hope my whole set didn't. You? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a long time. I would have been dead if I stayed in the bathroom for a half well, hour. Talk to my kid. He's in there an hour. So oh my anyway, goodness. literally, literally past my set. This kid will not get out of the to, off of the toilet. But I'm the same way. Wow. I passed it on to him. So, so <laughs> Harrison Ford. It's his ba- old backyard, and it's a compound. They call it Venice Comedy Compound. People mm-hmm. are out on chairs. They're even on a bridge of going across. It looks like a moat. The lap pool looks like <laughs> yeah. a moat, and we're on the other side of it. So they're pretty far away from us, and it's outdoors. Mm-hmm. And we hear ringing through the dark air, <laughs> the loudest. <laughs> right? Describe oh, it, it was. It was. A showstopper for yes. sure. It was just, you know, when there's like the little toot that kind of escapes out, and you're like, oh, wait, did I? Mm. But it was, no. it, there was no question because it when wasn't it. It was a toot. It was a it, full. It on, was a full. It was it a was, rager. It was, like, it was like a trombone solo. It was Completely. Like, like, the symphon, like Jimmy, the, it was the symphony leader <laughs> and orchestra leader. He just went boom. Completely. Your solo. And he let this thing out. Yeah. That I've never heard in my life. It was like no. a, uh, like almost like an earthquake. It was. And I was standing next to you yeah. when it happened yeah. because I heard it. I'm like, wait, did I? And then I th- the, when I saw the look on your face, I was like, oh, no, it happened. He heard it. It's not just me. And then and then Jimmy like tried to salvage the joke. And finally he was just like, hey, did you fart? Like there was, <laughs> he literally said, did you fart? You could not ignore that. No, you could. And he raised his hand. <laughs> the kid raised he his raised hand. His it head. was like this 25-year-old. 
uh, there was like a little fraternity there, and they were all there to see you, which I was really cool. Believe that, by the way, that's awesome. There were like twenty-four-year-old kids, a whole gang of them, yeah. with a pizza and beer. Uh huh. You know, in Harrison Ford's backyard, and they and they drove up from Orange County to see me. So I did not think they were my audience. They, they sure were, though. Well, I guess the farting that is my. That <laughs> <audience. laughs> kind of makes. And sense. by the way, you know, if you watch my set, I, oh, I'm never going to hear the end I of this. I'm never going to the bathroom ever I, again. <laughs> I literally <laughs> almost farted just because. Because because you couldn't all, let him top you. All bets were well. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it is. You got real competitive. Okay. I didn't think about that. Maybe that is the reason. It I was might going be. To. I just thought it was all bets are off now. Like why not? Well, that too. And you know, I've had gas before on stage and don't let it out, mm. which is a big controversy. Me and my mm. wife from we date, had, date one. Yes, you told me about yeah, that debate. Yes, can yes. you or can you not hold it in? Yes. And it's half and half. It, I've been doing it, the survey for years. It is half and half. So because there are times when you can, and there are times when you cannot. No, not that's half and half. They, my survey <laughs> oh, is half and okay. half. Half the people say. By the way, write to us, please. Yes, write please to, let us know. Can us. you? I love so the word now. fart. Just popped up on the screen. <laughs> let fart fart. Okay, fantastic. Yes, I have. Uh, I used to light farts when I was a kid. So I almost did that during my act because I. You said, were that kid. I said, "Well, of course I was." <laughs> I said, "All bets are off. I'm going to just do this." And and I, I was going to do it into the microphone too, and but I didn't do it. I chickened out. Oh my goodness! I couldn't go that low, even though it was already the bar was so low, so, and there was nobody that could follow the fart. So you went on. I mean, we followed it. Yeah, but you had to acknowledge. I had. It. That's the first thing. I was still laughing when I had to walk on to stage. <laughs> right, because I he, was. He stopped his act. Yes, he did. He, he was like, "I'm done. I can't follow the fart. <laughs> yeah. So let's bring Samantha on and, I was and like, oh, see thanks, what she man. can do." Yeah, right. Let's see. I mean, I was just, I was just really glad that it was a a, a guy that did that. Because like I was saying earlier, if a woman had let out a fart like oh. that, she would have burned the whole place down. Like, oh. that could not have gotten out. Well, yeah, be, no. because no witnesses. No, exactly. No witnesses. Well, I have a theory that I think that women, I had never heard a woman fart my whole life. We do. I know, apparently. <laughs> but um, I have a theory. They hold their gas for five years until they really know the guy. <laughs> Then he comes yeah. home, and there's a mushroom cloud around And one house. day it's he just... Goes, oh, she let go. It's our five-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's but, love. But, man, it's three months. And the yeah. first three months of Holden are the most painful days of our lives. <laughs> it's as close as we come to childbirth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, holding that in. And you're like, I shouldn't have had that third taco. You're talking to yourself. She's in the passenger seat. And then you hit a speed bump, and a little seeps out. And you're, you're making excuses. Oh, that's a sewage treatment plant. Uh, that's a paper mill. Oh, yeah. yeah. So... So what is your what so what are your standards when you go on a date with someone? You're single, right? I am. Okay. Yes. So single. Thanks for the painful reminder, Craig. It's not it's, see, it's pain <laughs> equals pleasure in comedy. I'm uh, sure yeah, you do true. bits about dating. Of course I do. Bad how can dates. you not? Yes, how, how can, can you, you not? not? That's what that's your pain point. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So do you do dating apps? I yeah, I don't like to admit it, but yes. Do you do now? I to me now. I grew up a long time ago in this business, mm. and we had no. There was none of that. Right. Literally none of that. I mean, I go it's probably a better. Thing, I go back actually. to you know, AOL when you had a you know like a disc that was sent to your house, and you had to that you like, get from Blockbuster. Yeah, you had to have a modem. And I remember that. Yeah. You know, so that's that's how far. So there was no. None of that was going on back then. But now I notice that comedians, almost everyone has a bit about online dating. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the McDonald's. We were like, that was our thing. Everything was Mick this and Mick that. Right. We'd make fun of McDonald's. This and airplanes. This is the new airplane joke mm -hmm. is, is dating. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you're looking at me like, yeah, I've got material. I do. You I don't, I'm not proud of it. <laughs> 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 but I have it. But there are just things I actually uh, put together. And I didn't, I didn't write and like, I, I actually took exact messages from strangers on the different apps and myself, just things they would say to me in my response. And I put together a whole like eight, 10 minute chunk about it. And it's just things that have been said on these apps because you get the most insane messages. Yeah. The you, material writes itself. Yeah. And by the way, technology that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. I have big thumbs. You know? Oh Yeah. And uh, did you see my post the other day? It was a true story. Which one? Uh, I said that the um, <clears throat> the K is next to the L on your oh, phone, yeah. right? Right. So I told a guy I was going to golf with him, and I said, 
when we get, I'm going to lick your ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to lick your ass, right? So literally, and I press send like an idiot. <laughs> I forgot to look at it. And I, and so that's another, t- you could get oodles of material, I realize, because other people wrote me yeah. about some of their mistakes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy, the guy that invented um, autocorrect, he died. Oh. Uh, yes. So may he rust and, and piss. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Touche. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's so, there's so much material from the tech world, mm-hmm. but it's got to be, it's got to start to get repetitive because if you go to comedy clubs, that's what you're dealing with. It's mostly single people or comedians. Yeah. You notice that? And they're, yes, it's, yes. I mean, it's, what would you say the percentages of, of, of single people? Single comedians? comedians? Yeah. <laughs> 85%. 85. I don't know. It's a lot. Wow. I don't know. It's, it's a lot. I think, well, it's because... You know, any any kind of artist, whether it be a musician, comedian, or whatnot, yeah. you, you kind of have to be a little into yourself because that's how you make your career. You have to keep pushing, and it's, you know, we, we live in this hustle culture where you have to yeah. be doing shows every night or you're a failure and all this stuff. So it's hard to meet people at shows. And, and I don't, obviously, I'm, I'm a woman. I don't know what it's like for male comics, but for female comics, sometimes guys assume that we're going to be mean to them, we're going to make fun of them, or... Uh, we're just not very nice or, you know, or they're so intimidated. M- male comedians assume. No, I mean, no men, comedian. like not, not comics. I mean like guys who would want to date a female comic. They might be a little intimidated at first. Oh, yeah. Do you know how every single time a guy finds out I'm calling, Oh, you can use that. You can use that. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. I'm like, that's the most unfunny thing I've ever heard. Why am I going to put it in my set? Like I've had people write me like nasty messages and then say, you, yeah, you could put that. You can use my name. I'm like, I have no interest in your name, random Facebook dude. I have a great idea for a book. Yeah. People who have dated or married comics. <laughs> I mean, There'd be some stories in Interview there. them. It'd be like, you know, chicken soup for the broken soul. Yeah. I mean, you could have story after story. People come up to my wife all the time. Is he funny at home? Does oh. he do the love master? Oh, I bet. Oh, I, seriously. Yeah. And she always has really to bad. like go... No, he's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because not always on stage. He saves no. it for the stage. And thank God for that because the comics who never turn off, oh. I'm like, aren't you tired? Oh. Also, you're annoying. Stop yeah, it. Just be a human so being, please. It's so, it's so desperate. It's why are you trying to one up? Every, just, just be. Just that's the energy thing. Yeah. I told you that I mentioned before. Yeah. It's it is an energy thing. It's something that I have purposely. This is kind of sad though. It's okay. Sad's I okay. purposely do not watch many comedians, and because well, there's a couple of reasons. I don't want to be accused of stealing. Yeah. Something comes in, I go, "Did I hear that somewhere before?" I only want to be evergreen, and I want to keep it real, experiential from my experiences. Right. And the other one is, I just it's a hard thing for me to be around that desperate yeah feel yeah. of which I had. Yeah. Oh, my God. And to get past it, you think yeah. I want to go back to it? No. The only reason I want to go back is to tell people don't go there. You right. Know, and help mentor them out of it. Right. I had That's yeah. funny that you say that because I had that exact feeling just like a, a couple months ago. Um, when we worked together. <laughs> yeah, it was you. This guy's a headliner. Right. <laughs> no, no, that no. so desperate. No, I, I, I popped by this. fart into the microphone. <laughs> I think he's about to fart. I was like, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to tell you, but I mean, it's divorcing me. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I popped, I popped by this like an outdoor show and it was, you know, just when we were starting to be able to even meet in groups again and all these comics showed up and they were just hovering around the one guy who'd been on last comic standing and following him around. And like, they're all just, you said, lick, lick your ass. They were actually licking each other's <laughs> ass. That's what was happening. Last comic standing got him this kind of standing. Well, you know, when there's like a bunch of the champion, no, he wasn't even the champion. No, was it like Alonzo or no, John Heffron or whatever. He was not. What? But to who these, who was it? You have yeah. to name names. Oh, and it wasn't anything. Okay. He did. It was it's Jeff nothing. Die. So Jeff Dye. So he pops well, in. Well, he's had other big credits, though. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is like, and I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about like the young kind of open micro comics. We're all just all following over. him around. And I was like, guys, you don't have to have that energy, you know? It's so desperate. Like, yeah. just talk to him like he's a real person. Yeah. You know, don't I, be like, I, hey, I hey, it, buddy, yeah. and you're so good. Like, I get it. You want to yeah. open for him. You want to, I, I understand you know there happens, is networking. Though, is the but opposite happens. Yeah. Because I'm in that position, you know. I'm sure. And I go backstage, and I've actually had people, I'm just real friendly. I'm me. I'm, hey, how's it going? Yeah. 
And um, I, you actually get the ones that diss you oh. intentionally. Oh, yeah. And like then, trying to trying, roast you to get your respect? No, no, no. It's just like, yo, I won't be an ass kisser. So they reverse it and they're oh. just not even friendly. No, no, see, th- no. You know, there's, oh. so that happens. Yeah. When you get empowered in life, period, if you're a leader, it always happens that way. You get yeah. the people that follow follow the leader and they're just fawn on them and, you know, and, they, and, yes. and so, and then you get yes. the ones who are anti because they resent that leader for having what they want. Right. And so that happens. There's a lot of dynamics that take place, especially in the kindergarten class of com- com- comedy. Absolutely. Backstage and comedy. That's yeah. exactly what I was referring to. Yeah. And I always wonder, like, other, I should talk to other headliners. As a matter of fact, if I have Jeff Dye, I'm going to ask him or someone like that. Yeah. Is how do you feel about that when you you smell it? You have to smell it. Do you enjoy right. it that, that they're fawning on you? Do you? Do you not stop that or move on to someone else you can connect with? I'm very very specific. I know who I can connect with, mm-hmm. you know, like a Zara, you know, yeah. it was immediate. She's and very it, real. She's so real. I yeah. can look her in the eye. She's got no desperation. There's no agenda. Right. And by the way, you know, I did get, end up getting her work and, you know, whatever. I mean, but there's the other ones though. They just have this, what are you going to do for me? Yeah. And they, and I can't have a friendship like that. It's very hard for me to hang out in these places because of it's that. not authentic. No, it's not. And yeah. it's people, and you know, I can smell it. I'm a big, you know, I, I'm literally a psychic. So it's very hard for me, right. you know, to be around that. So it's, and it's toxic. Have you found it to be, do you have any toxic situations that have happened to you uh, in comedy, you know, backstage or any backstabbing of you or, and I would imagine it would have come from females more than males. Um, You know, I have to say that actually, Maybe it's the group of female comics that I associate myself with, but we're really supportive of each other. Wow. That's been my experience. Um, cause I well, feel, way, to, way to get a sitcom. That's okay. <laughs> that I mean, you know, maybe I'm not, you know. Yeah. Well, you, yeah you Once I have my own sitcom, oh, maybe yeah. people will be. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's a whole other time. No. They'll, they'll be biting you and <laughs> behind your back. No, right. Well, that's really nice to hear. I'm happy to hear that. Maybe I'll hang out in comedy clubs more often. Yeah. I mean, but then again, a lot of the people who... Uh, I match energy with, since Mm -hmm. we're speaking of energy, those are people who don't have that desperate crap going on, which is why we get along, which is why it's like, let's help each other. And I'm not threatened by something that you get, right? you know, because I'm happy for you. And your chances are, you're probably going to hook me up with something too. So great. It's, it is, it is a little difficult when they're like you though. That's, that's when someone's not like you at all, there's much easier to hang out with. And there's no, there's very little jealousy yeah. Have you ever noticed when people are angry at someone, it's usually someone who's like them. Mm-hmm. It's usually their age, their ethnic group. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, even analyzing a, a comedian. Like I noticed like white comedians, white male comedians, they'll go after other white male comedians. They're not going to say something about a black comedian or Latino comedian, they, but they won't say anything. Yeah. Different standards they even have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I find that about, uh, I remember when I was a kid, I was going through this tunnel. And it was a very uh, dangerous tunnel because there was always, like, gangs and stuff. And it was, mm. like, this one guy that would wait on the other side of the tunnel. And I thought to myself, if I was a grown man, because I went through the tunnel as a grown man, and he, like, locked eyes with me, he wouldn't say a word to me because I'm nothing like him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's after a guy that's like him, his age, and stuff like that. But they eye you up. It's the same sort of thing with comedy. They, yeah. They eye you up and they go... This person, I resent them because of my own, you know, my own self-esteem issues or whatever yeah, it is. It's all projection. It, projection. Exactly. It's all of that. It has nothing to do with the other person. Exactly. And that, that's a very difficult lesson to learn. Yeah. That takes a lot of time. And I honestly think that I'm in the place where I am uh, emotionally and spiritually, if you will, because of what I've dealt with in my personal life. I don't feel like my growth has come from... Yes, I've, gr- I've grown. My confidence has skyrocketed from being a comedian. I have a lot of really incredible experiences. However, the the real rock, like internal core of myself, uh, that's from life experiences. And that's from dealing with like watching. I, I've literally watched both my parents pass away. Yeah. So when you deal with things like that and people come up with some sort of petty drama about, well, you booked a memory. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. 
Right, because it doesn't get any more dramatic than seeing your parents pass away. It doesn't. So yes. if you can get through that. Watching them take their last breath is a mm-hmm. very, very big thing. It is. And people don't even understand what that's like. No. Unless it, you've experienced it. Right. And sharing your experience. You mentioned the word almost in quotes. Uh, you said spiritual or whatever. Or something you said about. Like my spir- core. Uh, so you said something about spirituality or and then you said something or whatever. What is your whatever? What is your spirituality? What's your practice? Um, so I've never been religious. I wasn't raised mm-hmm. religious. My parents kind of. I don't know. I guess I was just a good kid. So they didn't really have to tell me what to do. I always just wanted to do mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think. My mantra is just, just, I like treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, um, um, just <laughs> be kind, uh, be and grateful. That's, and, that's, and that's your spiritual practice. Cause that's yeah. a practice that you make perfect. Uh, but I've talked to comedians before I've interviewed them, uh, atheists. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this bothers me about people have things in categories of it's either religious or atheist. To me, hmm. what you're talking about is in between, and I try to tell it's the atheists. It's some I go, sort of higher power, I believe exactly. in. Exactly. I said, I said, do you know that you're? T-? I said, what do you believe in? I believe in being good to people. I believe in being you know, loving, whatever. I go, that's your God. Yeah. So you are spiritual. You just don't want to call it that. Yeah. Because you have to be an atheist. Right. But that's not an atheist. If you believe in goodness, right? If kindness, that's a higher power. That's a source. Right. That's a source energy. It's divine. I try to tell people that all the time, but it's so it sounds like though that you don't um, practice it or or move further into it. You just are. My I feel like this is going to sound kind of witchy, but maybe my religion is nature. That's how I recharge. That's how I feel connected. Now, witchy would be like a broom or, or some cauldron. <laughs> well, like, I'm, yeah. I, I don't practice Wicca by any means. <laughs> uh, however, when I'm feeling awful or I need to recharge, I will. Um, I, I want to be around animals. I want. I just uh, did a show and we raised a bunch of money for a wolf sanctuary. Mm. Getting to look an eye, a, a wolf in the eye, mm-hmm. that's spiritual to me. It is. I agree. It's a connection. Yeah. yeah. It's a divine connection. That's, that's what it is. That's what people yes. have a hard time understanding because you've been raised with dogma. A lot of people are raised mm-hmm. with a certain dogma. They probably have even tuned out just now, me mentioning that. Probably. There's oh, hippy saying, dippy. Yeah, mm. don't talk about politics or religion. You know the yeah. reason for that. You know what the reason is? Why you don't talk politics and religion? Why? Because the political leaders and the religious leaders don't want you to tell the truth. They don't mm. want you to examine their hypocrisies. Oh, yeah. Or either, even their crimes. Yeah. So, therefore, they that's how they hide is they, you don't talk about that. Well, why wouldn't I talk about that? And you have such faith in whatever it is you're into. Yeah. In either your political leader or your religious leader. If you have such faith, then what? What? why do my words bother you? Why do my challenges bother you? Right. It's probably because they really know deep down that it's not the truth. Mm. And truth is also God to me. Yeah. Truth. That makes sense. Truth and love and true spirit and divinity and goodness and kindness. These are all, that's what this show is about. It's called Enlightened Up because it's truly finding that light within that we all are. Yeah. And let it shine. Absolutely. Now, you really do seem like you've got it. I think that's really cool. And you've got it. In a, in a way that I wasn't expecting when you, when you said the word spiritual. I'm going to lead her down this path. She's going to tell me she goes here and there. She meditates. But you she don't. does yoga. No, but, but, but you do yoga, right? No. You don't? <laughs> Not really. No. I mean, I do. I like to. A, a friend of mine, Stacia Patwell, she does. She's a certified trainer and a comic. Hilarious. Um, she has started uh, uh, like online classes and a training program called School of Thought. Really? Which is kind of awesome. Uh, so I've learned a lot of workouts from her, and I kind of... That's awesome. It's, now, I think it's a lot of yoga moves. Her. I want to have her on the show. Yeah, she's incredible. That sounds, that sounds really great. Yeah. She has a practice. I like to talk about practices because one of the things that I really truly exist for is, and the name of the old show was Can I Help You, is I really want to open people's minds up to other alternative ways of being, solutions in life. Mm-hmm. Because we really don't have them out there. They're not, we're pounded down with problems. Yeah. You watch the news, it's every single ad has something to do with what's wrong with you and the side effects of the fixing uh-huh. what's wrong with you. And that leads to another thing that's wrong with you. And that's all we're being pounded down with. I'm trying to give an alternative here. Yeah. So your alternative is be good, be a good yeah. person. Yeah. You know, and add some laughter and some levity. And that's really what I'm about. Let me completely change gears. <laughs> okay. Something I never noticed, not that we know each other that long like once, 
We're best of friends. We Come did on have now. dinner. We did. We had dinner. That was a lovely, fun dinner. That was. Um, in Santa Monica or Venice, rather. Um, anyway, after the show, tats, you're tatted up. I am. You're, you're like... Uh, Good to have a camera now. Yeah, you're like Sons of Anarchy over here. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm so cool. I was not expecting this from... Oh, because I was wearing Woodland, a jacket. Yeah, Woodland Hills. You know, you do have oh, a clean yeah. look. And if you're on audio, she's got a very clean... Like almost Midwestern look. That's so funny. Uh, white, white, <laughs> pretty white, and uh, you got a lot of tats. I'm I like do. noticing this. Now what? <laughs> I'm gonna be inappropriate. Are you breaking up with me? No, What's no, happening? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. No. No. I'm, ask. I'm one. I'm, it's the opposite. I'm. I'm. I'm going for nudity. What else is under there? <laughs> it's. I mean, I could show you all of them because it's mostly just my arms, and oh, I've okay. got a couple on my feet. I'm wondering thighs, ass. Haven't done like, that. Okay. Because that. Right. Uh, hurts apparently apparently like because your ass it's just all meat you know like that's gonna hurt and also you don't know how your ass is gonna change over the years so yeah. i don't want like a droopy pony back there you know so yeah so it could be initials turns into a sentence uh-huh and so i want to uh-huh. get stretched out i'm kind of a big believer i don't want anyone's face or anyone's name no. on me i don't no. No. i'm cool yeah and you don't have a tramp stamp no i do not oh, i managed okay. to avoid uh, the tramp stamp all right well yeah all right so i buried the lead and my wife claims i don't know how to say the word buried does that sound weird to you you said buried <laughs> that's what apparently, it sounded like apparently it is wrong buried is that what it is? Yeah, oh, we geez. buried her. I have a hard time with this word, and I'm so self-conscious now. Oh, no. This is how my wife imitates me. Oh, did you go to the burial? <laughs> <laughs> the burial. So she exaggerates <laughs> it. Same with the word tournament. Oh, my goodness. I don't say that word. Tournament. Yes, yeah, it's tournament. Tournament. It's not a tournament. It's a tournament. <sighs> oh, oh, you even Apricot gave Apricot or apricot? Apricot. Okay, we'll agree on that. Well, we're Apricot. good on that. We're good on that. What other ones you got for me? Tomato, tomato. Oh no! It's, everyone, it's tomato. Everyone's not says a tomato. person unless you're from freaking England. I can't stand oh, those tomato. People. Tomato. Yeah. yeah. Shove your tomato up your ass. Yeah, exactly. With and your I'll, English breakfast. I say ass, not ass. Ars. But, but, but there's you yeah, know there's certain words that I say apparently buried, buried. buried. I buried the lead. Buried. <laughs> It's not a word. Is that what it sounds like? Buried. Oh, this is horrible. I'm trying to make a U. <laughs> Damn it. I hate to be we'll, wrong. We'll work on it. Wow, you gave me the look like it really is wrong, too. I'm I was sorry. hoping you'd go, what's your wife talking about? Instead, oh, you're doubling down. Ooh, you're making it worse than she does. All right. <laughs> so you um, shovel dirt on the lead. I shovel dirt on the lead. <laughs> uh, so, yes, you're. Le- I didn't know this about you, by the way, when I. When Zara mentioned you, and I follow you, and then I see your stuff, and I didn't realize it, it happened like recently where I found out your lineage. Mm-hmm. Your lineage is like fame. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. And I don't know yeah. if you probably don't know this about me. I, by coincidence, I am friends with a ton of kids of celebrities. I bet. I mean, a ton. There's a lot of us. Like big, Big time, like Elvis's daughter was one of my <gasps> oldest friends from Whoa. when I moved out here, and I mean, it wait, goes, that's Lisa Marie, yes, right? It goes oh, on wow. and on and on. But you might have surpassed Elvis's daughter for who you're related to. No, <laughs> well, because he has. Listen, I was never an Elvis guy, even though I'm friends with her for years. I, I haven't seen her in a long time, but but I'm never an Elvis guy. I, I hate to even admit it. Because he didn't oh, write his own songs. I'm a Springsteen guy, and Alanis Morissette they write their own songs. Oh my god! I, wait. Alanis Morris. <laughs> oh no 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 no! <laughs> oh no! I'm gonna get kicked out. I said it. Alanis Morris. I think isn't it? It's Alanis. Oh geez. I love her. I was obsessed with her when Jagged Little Pill came out. Guess what? I saw her literally. Oh, saw is another one. I said my wife. Wait, says say I it said, again. I, my wife says I said I saw her. Saw her. I, I, oh, my <laughs> God, this is. Are you worst. making words? This is the worst. Saw her. I'm a freaking author. Look at oh, that book no. next to you. For God's <laughs> sakes, saw her. I okay, saw yeah, her perform yes. literally two weeks before that hit. Oh. She was nobody in a bar, my friend's bar. Wow. And he said, she's about to make it. And she she's sure about did. To hit. And I didn't, couldn't even pronounce her name, apparently <laughs> still. <laughs> and I called my DJ friends in, in Philadelphia. I said, listen, you got to play this. She's about to come out with this album. She's the best. I said, Monaset. I, nah. I didn't know how to pronounce it, but I it was 
literally the second greatest musical experience I've ever had. Second? What's the first? Springsteen. Oh, okay. Springsteen's like, yeah, it's like, we'll give you that. That's like a a huge experience for me, changed my life. But her, oh, the best. Oh, my God. But, but, um, and by the way, she now consider an oldie. This is frightening. That's insane to me. Yes. And I remember watching this young girl. Yeah. You know, she's on the stage in a bar, in a mm-hmm. bar weeks before. And oh wow. my God, she's, she's amazing. But then she just blew up. I mean, that's such an incredible record though. Jagged so, Little Pill. Yeah. So she wrote it yeah. and it's very personal. That's yeah. the kind of writing I like in comedy as well. Right. I don't like just a joke teller. I like really experiential true stories. Those are the people I admire. Oh, uh, the one who married me, uh, married my wife and I, um, who I go way back with, George Carlin's daughter. Really? As a matter of fact, he died when she was doing our wedding service. Oh, my goodness. I had to tell her that her dad died. It's a crazy story. <gasps> oh. But, yeah, so um, a l- long list of people that I happen to know, the kids of all these big celebrities. Wow. But yours is an unusual one because I grew up, it's just, it's like one of those things. I grew up with the guy, so he means more to me than even Carlin. Yeah. He means more to me than, than um, Elvis, and he's one of the first celebrities I ever saw when I moved to L.A. Hmm. And I'll tell you who it is, folks. Drum roll, please. Sit right back in your hue and tail. <laughs> <laughs> the skipper from Gilligan's Island, you are his granddaughter. That's right. And you, it, But you, he passed away when you were like seven or eight? Yeah, I was seven. So you looked interested when I mentioned that I met him and how I met him. You looked yeah. fascinated by it. Because I'm so jealous of everyone who got, he used to have that restaurant, Alan yeah. Hale's Lobster Barrel on La Cienega. Well, La Cienega and I've yeah. seen all the pictures and I've heard so many stories and I just Did wish you? that I could have been there and experienced it. Well, there I was, you know? brand new in LA. Yeah. Young guy with a mullet haircut. <laughs> oh, in, no. In the 80s. Oh, yeah. I had a little wham meets flock of seagulls. <laughs> oh, wow. And then, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> kind of how look. that was. but It uh, was, a, I want to see pictures. Wow. Shoulder pads and, oh, yeah. And that's when I met him, and there he was. And it was passed on to me, by the way, the legacy of him was my mom's a big film person. Mm -hmm. So she told me about Errol Flynn Mm -hmm. with his father, Alan Hale Sr. Right. So I'm all prepped on him. Yeah, oh, nice. So I know all about his career. You know, my mom told me this and that and everything. And uh, so I knew a lot about it. And there I walk in. And you don't expect this when you're brand new in L.A., There he was in the outfit. Yeah. Calling me little buddy. (laughs) I can only imagine what that must have felt like to see someone that you grew up with just right in front of your face. It was a little freaky. And he one of the first people I saw in LA. That's a great way to start. Trust me when I tell you this. I grew up literally going home and watching black and white TV. On U, it's called UHF. I don't even know what that is. It's these other channels below the VHF were the major channels. Then oh. there was this other knob underneath called UHF. Oh, it's I didn't know a, that's what it was called. It's on a regular. Yes, there's two knobs. Oh. The one is called a, a very high frequency. The other is ultra high frequency. Mm-hmm. And the UHF, you had to like surround the channel like a safe cracker. I well, remember that. For, yeah, well, you do know what it I is. I do. I just didn't know what it was called. It's the below channel. It's okay. like 48, 57. You yeah. know, it's really high numbers. It's called ultra high frequency. Yeah. Okay. So the other ones are, you know, 10, 7, 3, 4, you know, those mm-hmm. those are your basic channels. And you got the below. Well, that show was always on in the afternoons when I get home from school. Mm-hmm. So that's you have to understand that's what it meant to me. It's like, oh my God, I probably yeah. know every episode. So in honor of meeting you, <laughs> I had my kids watch. Oh my goodness. Recently. What do they think? I really was surprised that they liked it more than I thought they I would. I love that. I, I love it. Yeah. I mean, and it was um, it was an episode I, I kind of didn't remember. There's that, a few of them where you're like, oh, oh, I think I've seen this one, but wow, I but forgot But you're just about watching, it. and I have an 11-year-old who's very intellectual, extreme, mm-hmm. like old soul. Mm. He was like laughing at it, like who could who could be watching this? Like, right? You've, it's a total suspense of belief. It, completely. You know? <laughs> like It's, yeah. I mean- how much they packed. I know, but that's the charm of it. Especially Thurston Howell, like for a three hour tour. Right. You know, and by the way, those were the comedy bits back when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Everybody did a thing on a three hour tour. Oh, I'm sure. You know, she's got furs and whatever it was. But uh, it was one of those shows that was campy. Very campy. And you just accepted it's campy. Yeah. That's and the acting was campy. Very that. But that was the tone. That's what made it so lovable. 
Now, did you know what I noticed the other day? Because I hadn't seen it in years when I was showing the kids about your grandfather, Alan Hale Jr., mm -hmm. playing the skipper. Did you know what I noticed about his performance? Can you guess? Mm, that he, he was very expressive. Okay, expressive. Uh, but there was something about it. And I'm wondering if anyone ever noticed this. It's if the, the two of them together are similar to something else. I don't want to. Oh, him and Gilligan? Yes. Uh, I don't, don't, don't want to. Like Abbott and Costello? Close. Or. Um, close. Oh, my goodness. Laurel and Hardy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Has that ever been said before? Yeah. Oh, really? I grew up on Abbott and Costello as well. One wow. of my favorite movies ever is Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. Oh, my God. I have the poster in my living oh, room. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's another kid I met before. Anyway. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> wow. I think I met the kid of Abbott and Costello. But anyway. Yeah, it's a formula that works. So you know? I noticed his acting was very similar to mm -hmm. uh, Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. You know, you've got the whole, you know, take the hat and yeah. smack them. And very, like, that, physical, expressive, yes. and, uh, that big. face, The facial, you know, expression uh -huh. of, of uh, consternation and exhaustion and yeah. over this little idiot. Mm -hmm. It was the same sort of thing. It was interesting mm -hmm. to watch, and I had never noticed it before. Yeah. But I guess these are, like, you know. It's a formula that works. It's a formula, yeah, yeah. that Sherwood Schwartz obviously had. And then, by coincidence, the show after that, the other day when we were watching – me and the kids, mm -hmm. I have a seven-year-old and 11-year-old we're watching. It was another Sherwood Schwartz show. Do you know what that one is? Brady Bunch. Yes. Yeah. Now, would you, did you, now you're too young for that, but that was another one. It's a reruns. No, I watched watch. it all the time. Reruns, right? Yeah. I mean, Gilligan's Island was on every, like in every day. elementary school. Every day I would every, get home. Yeah. Fox 11, come yeah. home at like three, four o'clock. Yeah. And, and that's what you'd be on. Right. Exactly. Yeah. This is how we were raised. I, I wonder yeah. if it happens now. The show? No, it, this. I think it's a paradigm that doesn't exist anymore. That you come home from school and that's what you oh, do. Oh, no! And they go on games and well, because and, and there's also there's eight hundred channels, so not yeah. everyone's watching that one thing that's we, on in the afternoon. We didn't have any choices. Yeah, we had those reruns that they chose for us. Yeah. to see. Well, but I mean, there's a new, there's a, the new reruns of Seinfeld and Friends. Right. That's what they on TBS or whatever. Right. It is. But I. I think that custom is just fading. It is. You know. Well, on, you didn't have Wi-Fi back then. No. You know, kids didn't have, oh, I'm going to go Google something or I'm going to watch Disney Plus. I, you know? Two cans and a string. That's yeah. how we communicate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you have that growing up? Two cans and a string? There was Smoke like, signals. Carrier did, pigeons. Did you, did you have that? You know. <laughs> I think we did. I think I did try that once. I don't remember Two if cans worked. and a string. You're like, hello. You know, meanwhile, yeah. it's they're right next to you. They're, That's I how know. they're here. That's it, how I know. It's not like it's going through the string. But it seems cool when you're a kid, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's all it's you all had you to had. get creative when you were a kid. So, so he he was, um, did did did, did, did the, the Hale legacy? Because you remember your great grandfather also, mm -hmm. big star with doing Robin he Hood. He was like Errol Flynn's sidekick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Did this legacy have anything to do with you be becoming a performer in entertainment? Um, probably. I mean, I, I've definitely used the word probably. probably. Like you never thought of it before. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. asking this for the, Craig Shoemaker is quite the interviewer. You think James Lipton of podcast, <laughs> he got deep and dark. I never thought about it. Wow. This is a new There has to be horizon. some sort of. <laughs> Reasoning that does that, that, that have some inspiration? Yeah, absolutely. Coming from that. Yeah, absolutely. When I was a, when I was young, all I wanted to be was an actor because I love the craft of it. I, it it's it, you know I love that, um, and I also think I got this idea in my head that if I want to be valid, if I want to matter, I have to carry on the name. I have really? to be an you actor. Do have that. I, that was self-imposed pressure that nobody put on me but me. Interesting. Absolutely. And it skipped a generation because neither one of your parents. Yeah. My dad, I don't dad, think wanted to be in the shadow. He 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 did. Yeah. And then my uncle. How was his in relationship with uh, with Alan Hale? Uh, it was your good dad. as far as I mean. I was so young when my grandpa passed, right. but um, I mean, from what you heard from from him, what I heard, it was good. He spoke about him and yeah. In a good way. Oh, like yeah. He was a good father. I've never heard anyone say anything negative about my grandfather, That's, to be very honest. You know what? It actually seems that way. He, That lovable guy yeah. that you met at the restaurant, yeah. that's who he was. Yeah. I heard Jim Backus was a creep. I've heard I've heard he would like he... Maybe a drunk. 
yeah, maybe, maybe a some, womanizer. <laughs> oh, well, well, that, you know, yeah. that you'd say that about almost anyone. Yeah. Well, this, I could, we could do a sequel. I mean, this, the, we, and we just got into uh, unburying. I know, the, there's the so week. much. But you know what's funny is actually on the way over here, um, as I was getting ready, I'm like, oh, let me just turn on TV and have something in the background. And I did not plan this. I did not, it just happened. And I had never seen it before. Uh, it was on TV land, you know, which plays a lot of older yeah. re reruns. Uh -huh. it happened to be the episode of Gunsmoke with my grandpa. And oh. I'd never seen it before. And then get this. No. Here's where the, the magical, crazy, weird universe, energy, something spirits are happening okay. because, uh, I'm watching it and I, I get kind of emotional sometimes because I see my dad and him and I miss him. I miss them both. My, my dad looked just like him. No way. It sounded like him too. No. Mm -hmm. So when I miss my dad, I can listen to my grandpa, which oh my I'm goodness. very grateful for. Crazy. Uh, but so I'm getting kind of a little bit emotional. Yeah. And then I realized, oh my God, oh my God, that is Paramount Ranch, which is what, 10 minutes from here? Oh yeah. So Paramount Ranch. Burned if you guys, down a couple years ago. Yes, it did. Unfortunately, I don't know. Did you hear my joke about it? I did. Okay. I was yeah. like, were you in the bathroom too? Ah, uh, no, but I, that I is every word. a true story. So I had my mom's funeral service at Paramount Ranch, complete with horses and everything. And I felt so drawn to that place and I didn't know why. And then all of a sudden I see an episode with my grandfather at Paramount Ranch. Wow. But you have to tell the joke. <laughs> okay, so uh, so I did have we had the most beautiful funeral funeral service for my mom at Paramount Ranch, which is this whole old Hollywood Western yes. town. They filmed a lot of great wow. shows. Yeah, uh, Westworld was filmed there. Yes, recently. yeah, yes. that's one of the more recent and ones. Doctor Quinn, Quinn Medicine, Medicine Woman. Woman that's that. right. Yeah, it's very close to here. Te I not even ten minutes. I think it's one off Wait ramp away. This photo was taken there, <laughs> but go ahead. Are you? This is weird. This, uh, I so think I'm actually going to have to go after this podcast and just walk around and see what's left. Wow. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so soon after we had the service, the entire ranch burned to the ground in the Woolsey fire. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I found that out, I was devastated because all I could think of was, oh my God, if my mom would have died three months later, I would have had that cre cremation for free. I couldn't even do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at me so intently. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's a great joke. We got to close with that. I know. Either that or fart. People don't know what to do <laughs> with know, it a lot. A big fart. They just stare at me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's, it's funny. It's a great joke. And that is a joke that's perfect because it comes from pain and it's real and it's true. Completely. Such a pleasure hanging with you. I could so do this good. forever. This is fantastic. But, um, Samantha Hale, our guest. How do we find you on social media? Um, Twitter and Instagram at the Samantha Hale. Oh, the, you just put a the on there. I, apparently, there's another Samantha Hale that I have to take out a hit on because she had the Tell name. Tell me about it. I've got Craig Shoemaker, that the, this damn tech nerd. I know. He's probably listening right now. Give me my name back. Yeah, how God's dare sense. you? I have to be the love master for the rest I of my know. life. I know. And That's if anybody has Apple TV or Amazon yeah. Prime, my one-hour special, Only Happy When It's Raining Men, is available. It's oh on iTunes as well. God. Spotify, anything, anywhere it's streaming, you can find that's it. That's awesome. Thanks. Well, if you're looking for a man, you do know, I don't know if I told you, it's that book that's next to you, Love Mastered. Yes. Digital Journey of Love and Happiness. It yes. ends with me fixing her up. And it's my ninth marriage that I fixed up. <gasps> I'm really good at fixing up. Help me. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm very, very good at this. So you just give me your stats and I'll come up with someone. And anybody, listen, all the listeners, I'm sure there's a lot of single men out there. Hey, check it out. Hey. Yeah, you got a, you got a lot of tats. All I right. do. You like tattoos? <laughs> you like tattoos. She's got it. She's got humor. You like damaged she, people? She's got beauty. <laughs> and she, she, she's the skipper's granddaughter. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's the craziest thing I've ever said. Anyway, thank you for so much for being here. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe. And not just you, Samantha, but everybody listening. <laughs> subscribe. Give us a good rating. If you're thinking about... If you think about giving us a bad rating, uh, g give it to Joe Rogan. He's made millions yeah, of dollars. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's, he's fine on it. He can use he can handle all of your bad ratings. He can. I can't. I need to pass the word around. Pass the word about the show. It really is about enlightening up. Pass it around like you pass around drugs or buy somebody a drink. Hey, if you listen to Craig Shoemaker's Enlighten Up. There's yeah. a solution for us because it builds your immune system, and it's very good for your health if you laugh more. Yeah. And he had Samantha Hale on last week. you got to listen to it. So go pass the word around. I hope you had a great time today, and uh, remember, enlighten the fuck up. <laughs>